Hey everyone, this is Andres from Marmoset, here to talk about some of the new cool things available in Marmoset SkyShop 107. This tutorial is going to cover SkyShop's new scene tools, the sky triggers, anchors, and the new sky manager system. We'll also talk about some of the differences between 106 and 7, and how to get an old scene set up with the new updates. If you load up a SkyShop scene, created with SkyShop 106 or earlier, you'll notice that everything is black. That's because every scene in 107 now requires a sky manager. To create one, go to game object, create other, sky shop, sky manager. And once the manager is in the scene, everything starts working normally again. The manager is responsible for handling all of the global stuff now. So the sky that's bound globally to all objects by default, is the global sky in the sky manager. It replaces the active sky previously in the sky script itself. You can also control whether or not the sky box is drawn in the background image. It also controls some of the global settings like box projection and blending that you can disable, as well as other global attributes of the scene. Now if we press play, this is one of the older demos we had where you can click on these spheres and change which sky is bound to the scene. Now that changes the global sky and the sky manager. You'll also notice that it is blending between the two skies. The previous sky and the next sky are being interpolated between over a brief period of time. You can change that easily also in the sky manager. For instance, if we wanted that interpolation to take several seconds, we could get a slow blend between current and next guys. You could even use this to simulate time of day. You could interpolate between day and nighttime skies for your scene. When dealing with multiple skies in your level, you can also attach game objects directly to skies. Previously, you would do this through materials or scripting. But now there's a new script called a sky anchor that you can attach as a component to any game object with a render. And the sky anchor acts as a link between this object and any sky in a scene. So for instance, we can set the link type to be a target sky and we can pick which sky in the scene we want this object to always be bound to. So now we've made our chrome ball always attached to the blue rooftop sky which overrides any changes to the global sky. We can also now set bounds or areas of influence for skies. So to do that, we select the sky and add a trigger. The trigger will set an area of influence for the sky. So any render that falls within these orange bounds will automatically be linked to that sky. So the sphere, while it remains in the box, in the orange box, will be bound to the skyline sky. And then out here it will get the sunset. And while we're playing, the transition between the two skies is also interpolated and blended. The control for that is also in the sky manager, the local sky blend time. So we can make that one second to have the fade happen more gradually. Another nice property of the sky anchor, you can give objects an offset when it comes to testing against the sky triggers. So here we have an offset point we can move around. <clears throat> and that's the point that's tested against sky triggers in the scene. So this would be handy for oblong shaped models where you want to specify exactly what is tested against these bounds. The default sky bind type for the anchors is center. So that will use the renderer's geometric center as a checkpoint. You can also link it to a transform of another object in the scene if you needed to set up more complex rigs or hook it up to animation, for instance. 
at runtime, this whole system of objects when moving around and hitting sky triggers being applied to skies is handled by the sky manager. So the sky manager has these options to auto apply in game and in editor mode. And when these are enabled, the sky manager searches the scene for game objects that have been created or have been moved around and tests each one against every sky trigger within the scene. It does this with the aid of the sky anchor. So if we press play, we'll notice that our sphere has been given the sky anchor component. Every game object with a render that's not marked as static, every game object that's able to move around, will be automatically assigned this sky anchor component, which is just a short little script, but it facilitates that link between skies and objects. Because the Sky Manager has to search the entire scene and periodically check for moved and created game objects, this process can be a little CPU intensive and it can have a memory footprint. It's been optimized and cached internally, however, it is something you should be aware of when developing for lower end platforms such as mobile. You can also disable auto apply only in the editor. So the uh, editor preview of what auto apply looks like is still in beta. And if it's giving you issues performance wise or is glitchy, then you can disable it. Once it's disabled, you won't see changes when objects move around until you select the sky manager again or hit preview auto apply. Hitting preview auto apply will give you a fairly accurate representation of what your game scene will look like once the game is simulating and the whole auto apply system is running. You can also apply skies locally. So we can select the sky that has a trigger volume and there is a new button called preview apply. This will, will search for renders only within the bounds of this box and then apply just this sky which is a little cheaper too, and a nice preview of seeing what this guy looks like applied to nearby things. If you disable auto apply in the game and in the editor, the sky shop will start working as it used to in the old way, where you had one global sky applied to everything. And if you wanted to apply local skies or custom skies to individual objects, you could do so either with the sky anchor system or through your own scripts. And those all still work the same way. And the API for scripting with the sky script is still the same. Blending will still work without auto apply as will box projection. The only difference is the trigger system is disabled. Thanks for following along. This was just a brief intro to SkyShop 107. Um, there's plenty more to cover, so check out the Marmoset YouTube channel for more tutorials and videos.